Good morning, church folk, saints and sinners. Give yourselves a hand. Looking good on our anniversary service for our pastor. I see all the men got the fresh haircuts. All the women went to the beauty salon and the nail salon. I'm your master of ceremony. I am Deacon Kevin Cohen. And I'm up here just to help my guy out. Introduce yourself. Take a minute. My name is Jeremiah. When I grow up, I want to be a businessman, and I'm nine years old. He, he being honest, he had a lot more than that. Tell him what kind of car you wanted. A Porsche. <laughs> what kind of home? A mansion. And, and, and what was she going to do with the money? Um, save it with my family in the church. So let's get this on the road. Now we will have the introductory introduction of our honorees. Let's stand up for our reverend, our pastor, Reverend Lewis, and First Lady Miranda Lewis. Stunning. You can be seated. Thank you. Musical selection New Mount Pleasant NBC Mast. Church choir. Praise you, praise you. Clap 
We are going to have next. We are going to have devotions. Devotion, the Decon Board of New Mount Pleasant, NBC. Our scripture this morning, take heed. The Lord made a covenant with them and commanded them, you should not fear other gods or bow yourselves to them or serve them or sacrifice to them, but you should fear the Lord who brought you out the land of Egypt with great power, with an outstretched arm. You should bow yourselves to him and to him you shall sacrifice. And the statutes and the rules and the law and the commandment that he wrote for you you shall always be careful to do. You should not fear other gods, and you should not forget the covenant that I made with you. You shall not fear other gods, but you shall fear the Lord your God, and he will deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. That is 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, the 35th through the 39th verse. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. morning. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only God that we know, the only true living God, the only God that you pray to and answer your prayers and hear you daily, the only God that loves us all individually and loves us all as the same. Lord, here we are at your throne of grace, the only way that we know how, Lord, on bending knees with humble hearts and bow our heads, Lord, in prayers of thanksgiving. This is the month of thanksgiving, but every day is thanksgiving, Lord, because you continue to wake us up each and every day, Lord. Lord, we know somebody laid down last night and didn't get up this morning, Lord. But you seem fit, Lord, to touch us all early this morning, each and every one of us, Lord, to see another day, a day that wasn't promised to us, Lord. Lord, and somebody, somebody woke up this morning but couldn't get out that bed this morning, Lord. But, Lord, you blessed us this morning, Lord, that we, we have access to our limbs and our senses, Lord. We're clothed in our right mind, Lord. We have health and strength, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the food on our tables. I thank you for the shoes on our feet, Lord. I thank you for the roof above our head, Lord. Lord, I just continue to thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your holy word and your Holy Spirit will lead and guide and direct our paths, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for our pastor and his wife this day as we celebrate their eighth anniversary. And, and I just remember when I first joined this church and the pastor told me, he said, Kevin, continue to follow me as I continue to follow the Lord. And I just know that you're going to continue to bless him and his wife and his family, Lord. And continue to have him be the man that you called him to be, Lord. To lead this church, Lord. To continue to lead this flock, Lord, the way you wanted to be led, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our church this morning, Lord. We thank you that our doors are still open when so many other churches are closing, Lord. And we just want to continue to thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just, we just want to ask forgiveness this morning as well, Lord. 
Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, our shortcomings, anything we said, did, or thought that was not pleasing in thy holy sight or lined up with thy holy word, Lord. Please forgive us, Lord. Consecrate this place, Lord. Let your spirit roam in this place. Let us feel your spirit this morning, Lord. And, Lord, we just we continue to just give you praise and give you honor, Lord, for being God and God all by yourself, Lord. But, Lord, I want to thank you for Jesus, Lord. I want to thank you for the one that went to that cross, Lord, and laid down his life, Lord, giving us all access to the kingdom, Lord. And when we leave this place, Lord, you said you, Jesus said he went to go prepare a place for us, Lord, that we will be with you for eternity, Lord. Lord, I want to continue to pray for me and my family, Lord. I ask that you continue to, to touch us each and every day, Lord. Keep us healthy, keep us strong, keep us united. Not only my family, Lord, each and every family, Lord. I pray that families exist the way that you designed them to exist, Lord. And Lord, as I've been watching the TV yesterday, I see so many kids, Lord, uh, uh, just getting sick and dying or overdosing, Lord. I'm asking that you continue to protect our babies, Lord. Lord, protect our children against any type of bullying, any type of a fleck, whether, whether it's physical, mental, Lord. And camp your, gang, your, gang, your, your garden angels around our children, Lord. And keep them safe in this sin-sick world that we're living in, Lord. And as I look over the church today, I see so many people travel so many miles to make it here today. And I want to thank each and every one of you, Lord. I want to thank you for the traveling grace that you gave to them, Lord. Some have came over 100 miles to be here today, Lord. And you brought them here safe, Lord. And I'm asking for a safe return back to their homes, Lord. And then, Lord, I just want to pray for my brother Richard Phillips who's not here today. But I'm going to continue to lift up my brother and his dad, Lord. And I'm asking, Lord, that you give his dad a speedy recovery and you touch Rich's heart and let him know that his dad is already, already healed because he's praying to the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, and I just want to pray for anybody else that's going through anything with their family at this time, Lord. Lord, and then I pray that you go to the hospitals, Lord. You go to the penitentiaries, Lord. You go to the, to the mental wars, Lord, and continue to touch, heal, Lord. And let them know that you are with them, Lord. You have not left them. You have not forsaken them, Lord. You will be with them every step of the way, Lord. And I just want to continue to thank you, Lord, for what you continue to do for me and my family, Lord. Providing me with a job, Lord, that I can take care of my family. Giving me traveling grace each and every day as I go to work, Lord. Keeping me covered in this sin-sick, crazy world we're living in, Lord. And I just want to thank you, Lord. And I'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, to give you the honor, and give you the glory. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. And amen. Thank our brother, Deacon Kevin Crawford, for that wonderful prayer this morning. Our next order of service is our announcements by our very own Sister Sadie Stewart. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Oh, praise the Lord, saints. God woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Giving all reference and praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ to our pastor and first lady on this eighth year anniversary celebration. We love you, we salute you. To Reverend Thomas, Evangelist Quinn, to our guest speaker, and I don't even wanna call him a guest, but to Reverend Prentice Lewis, great of Starlight Missionary Baptist Church, to his beautiful wife, to the greater Starlight family, to the Pastor's Aid Committee under the leadership of Sister Debbie Curry, to our deacons, to this beautiful anniversary choir, to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram followers, and to you, our in-person guests and visiting friends. We are live here at New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. 434 South Gravilla Avenue in the beautiful city of Inglewood, California, where the Reverend Dr. Philip A. Lewis is our pastor. We are elated that you joined us this morning. Here are a few highlights 
of some of our upcoming events here at New Mount Pleasant. You can also find the schedule of events on our website at nmpmbc.com. Woo, thank you. Today, November 13th, oh, we thank you for joining us. New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church and the Pastor's Aid woo, for our pastor's eighth, cel eighth anniversary celebration. Our pastor, Philip Lewis and First Lady Sister Miranda Lewis. Oh, we are elated. A prize will be given today. I hope your guests have come to, if you brought five members, or five guests or more, amen? And again, we are so happy and we welcome our guest, Greater Starlight Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Philip <laughs> Prentice Lewis is the pastor. Our theme, Everything New for You, which is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. You look marvelous in your colors of blue and white. Amen. 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 We ask that you don't forget your obligation, $25. Amen. 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 The ushers have the anniversary en envelopes. Amen. So all you got to do is wave your hand if you didn't get it as you entered the sanctuary. And we are here for you. Amen. We ask that you please join us after service for lunch in the Meriwether Fellowship Hall. Amen. 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 Our virtual Wednesday night Bible study has started. We ask that you join us on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. It's taught by our own Pastor Lewis. Amen. We wish those of you celebrating a birthday in November a happy birthday. November 20th. Amen. Amen. November 20th. Join the mission for their woman-to-woman -woman forum virtual service. Reverend Deisha Duckett from Oakland, California, Amen. will be the speaker. Amen? Amen. Amen. More details to follow. Look out on your emails. And then on November 24th, Thanksgiving Day service, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., testimonials and praise. God has brought us from a mighty long way. Amen? Amen. 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 And to our... Um, we receive a letter from Anthony Hill. Anthony is incarcerated and his court date is coming up uh, in November. And Anthony, uh, I just wanna highlight a few things that Anthony wrote in his letters and he wanted to target the youth and young adults, amen? Anthony stated that I will be back at church in no time. God has placed me here for a good reason. He says, jail is no place for you. He said, listen to your mothers and your fathers. He said, I am happy. I'm going to church in here. I'm making the best of this situation. He said, I am happy. Again, because this is the longest I have been sober. He said, I love you guys, and I will be back to my new Mount Pleasant Church family. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Saints, we ask that you continue to peruse our Facebook page at nmpnbc.com for details of events of our weekly schedule. And remember and never forget that NMP is the place to be. Amen. I turn it over to our pastor, I believe. We don't want to work you on this show day, but... Uh, or either, I guess I turn it over to the MC. Amen. When in doubt. When in doubt. When in doubt. All right. We just want to give a reminder that we're still following CDC orders and guidelines. So if you don't have a mask, could you please put a mask on? If you need one, contact the ushers and you'll get one.
musical selection, New Mount Pleasant, NBC Mass Choir.
amen, 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 amen. Just one second. Amen. Look, um, uh, I don't want folk to think that we as a church don't understand what honoring church protocol is. So I want to make sure all our people have a mask. If you do not have a mask and you're with me, I need you to hold your hand up and get a mask. Now, here's why we do this. It may not be my protocol at Greater Starlight. Maybe it's not my protocol at Greater Starlight. But when you're in somebody else's house, like if you're in somebody else's house, you honor the protocol. Amen. Amen. And uh, you have the right to believe whatever you want to believe and all of that. But we need to honor the house protocol. I think Nate doesn't have one um, over here. Uh, uh, okay. Al, do you have one? Al has one. All right. Okay, you don't have one. Daryl doesn't have one. All right, right here. When you're singing, you don't, you don't need the mask when you're singing, but while the service is going on, amen, amen. Hey, it's just right to be right. right. Amen. Let's give the New Mount Pleasant Mass Choir another round of applause. As I look out in the audience, audience, it's a beautiful thing to see the church full. I mean, we still got a balcony area, so that means we got work to do as far as bringing people into the building. But we can't use the excuse about COVID and all this other stuff anymore. We need to be in the church, and it's wonderful to see, so keep it up. Prayer call. Evangelist Velma Quinn. Praise the Lord, everyone. Anyone in here love Jesus? Let's give him a hand clap. Amen. Shall we stand in the presence of the Lord? This is prayer time. If you have a prayer request, the Lord says in his word, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. If it's according to my will, if you don't have a need, you know someone that do have a need. So we want higher be our shundo. We want to pray one for another and remember those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. Times now are crucial and we need to make up in our minds to really love the Lord and dedicate our heart, soul, and mind to being a Christian and a light in this dark world for someone else to get to know who Jesus is. So let us bow our heads. High to be our Sundo Lord. Oh, be our Shundo Lord. We be beyond Sataka in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you. We praise and magnify your holy name. We worship you today in the beauty of holiness. We say yes to your will and yes to your ways. We thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins and washing us in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you for choosing us to live for you. Thank you, Lord, for eternal life through your word today in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for what we have and what we don't have. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for calling us out of sin and giving us a mind to live a Christian life, a holy life, a clean life, and walk up right before you in the beauty of holiness. We thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody told the devil that he was not going to get their lives today, and they have accepted you as their Savior. We ask you today to heal the sick and afflicted everywhere, all over the world. People are suffering and dying and going through things without ever knowing who Jesus is. Send your rain in the starving land, Lord. Visit the people. Show us who you are again in love and mercy and kindness once again in the name of Jesus. Send your word in the hospital room, on the operating table. I pray that, God, you would change the hearts and minds of people 
to get off drugs and alcohol, to get married and live with their families and be fathers and to their children, mothers to their children, and bring our children into the house of God once again. Change them and save them before it's everlasting too late, Lord. Help us to be a light in this dark world to the world to know that, God, you are real and no one else beside you. We love you today, and we thank you for loving us. Now, Lord, we ask that you would send your word under the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. Speak through the hearts of the preacher today. Give him power, boldness to send your word to those that are listening on Facebook, Zoom, and any other thing that they are tuned into today, Lord. And speak to our hearts today that are in the sanctuary, Lord. Help us to love one another. Help us to be real in our Christian walk for you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, bless the pastor and wife of this church. Send new members in all of your churches around the world where people do not know who Jesus Christ is before it's too late, Lord. The devil is a liar and the truth of God is not in him. He is not the God of this world. You are the God of everything. In the beginning, you created heaven and earth, and you are in power today, Lord, and we thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, everything we do in the service today, we want you to be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for everything now according to your will. David wrote in the scripture in the morning, in the evening, and at noonday, I will pray and call on the name of the Lord. So let's get back in the habit of praying. Let's get back in the habit of reading the word. Let's get back in the habit of being faithful to the God higher, heavy our shadow that we serve, and let God know that we love him in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for this prayer. Now answer the prayer requests of those that are sick, in the hospital room, in their own homes, on the street corners, all the homelessness where people don't know who you are, mental hospitals, touch their minds and bring them back to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God. And let all of us, if you agree with anything you said to God thus far, let's thank him for it by the clapping of our hands. In the name of Jesus we pray, thank God, amen. Amen, amen. Thanks, Evangelist Bill McQueen, once again for that prayer. One thing that we should all be in agreement is, is that we're all standing in the need of prayer. Introduc introduction of guest speaker. That would be myself. Our guest speaker really needs no introduction. He's not only a friend of the family, he is family. Him and our pastor got the same last name, these Lewis boys. So we're anxious, we're here for a treat. Pastor Lewis is a powerful, powerful speaker, man of the word of God. And me being right here, I see that he was in his playbook and I can feel his energy so I know he's ready to go. So that would be our guest speaker. Let's give it up for the Reverend Prentice, Prentice Lewis. Representing Greater Starlight Missionary Baptist Church. Musical selection, Greater Starlight Missionary Baptist Church.
Amen, amen. Amen. Somebody that knows he's worthy. Yes. yes. It might not be but two or three of y'all, but how many of y'all know he's worthy? And how many of you came to lift him up today? Hallelujah. We thank God for the grace of leadership. I'll say that again, for the grace of leadership. And praise God for these eight years. Hallelujah. Praise his name. And he heard a commotion and it was Jesus passing by with the crowd and it stirred his emotion. He'd been displaced his whole life, could even try.
Y'all know that Sunday school song. Thou keep calling, calling and calling, Master, do not pass me by. Come on, help us. I'm calling, say that. Lord, I'm standing here and I'm waiting for you. Oh, yeah. Come on, help me. Lord, oh, don't pass me by. Anybody praying that prayer? Lord, don't pass me by. Well, maybe I can get somebody. Anybody glad that he didn't pass you by? Come on, give God his praise. Bless him today. He's worthy of all praise and all honor. I don't know about you, but God has been good to me. My mama said he's been better to me than I've been to myself. And I want to bless him today. I want to lift him up today. I want to praise his holy name. Hey, he's worthy. Oh, oh yes. My, 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 my. Y'all better quit acting like y'all act at the house. Come on.
You know, if you've been to church, you ought to feel like you've been there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. I, y'all, didn't, y'all didn't call me over here to stump a hole in your carpet. Hallelujah. We take time today to honor the living God. God, our, our Savior and our Sustainer. God, our Sovereign. We bless him because there's none like him. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. We worship him and lift up his name because, as I said earlier, he is worthy to be praised. How great it is to be here at New Mount Pleasant to share with our brothers and sisters in this time of uh, worship. I thank God for our honorees today. And it's only fit that we set aside the man of God, his wife, because of how they've labored in this vineyard for eight years. And I realize that every day has not been sunny, but faithfulness called them to stand up and make it through these eight years by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I praise God for you as a fellowship that has adopted us into your family. And thank God, uh, Pastor Philip uh, is my friend for real. I'm like, I'm like uh, the boy in Wyatt Earp when they asked Doc Holliday, what you doing out here, Doc? You could be at home in bed. You got a legitimate excuse not to be out here fighting with Wyatt Earp. He simply proclaimed to him, Wyatt Earp is my friend. Come on, somebody. Amen. Brother Philip and Sister Miranda, Miranda, they are close, dear friends, even family uh, to us, and we praise God and thank God for all of uh, you who are here. Uh, we're here, not normally we're not here, uh, we don't go out on Sunday mornings, but we're here because of your magnanimous hearts as a church. Um, we lost some beloved members and when we came here to do the funeral services here you were so kind to us you, 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 you let some things slide so that we could have a dignified service and pastor I want to say we're here because we're thanking you also in church for that kind of kindness Everybody knows that I've been coming here for years. I started coming here um, with, uh, I think it was Cecilia Brown, her mother, uh, and Nell and Willie. Hey, Amen. Because I was on the eating crew at their houses. Amen. And, uh, hey, and if somebody feeds you, you ought to, you ought to follow them. Hey, Amen. That's right. We've, we've been here, and to all of you, all of you are wonderful people, and I don't want to prolong uh, this thing because you got your theme, and it's a wonderful theme, and I, and I love that. Please uh, uh, excuse my wife today. My wife has been sick for about the last week, and y'all know, you know, you know me and Glow roll together. Hey, Amen. We've been doing it for some 40-some years, and uh, we, we roll together, and if, if her husband pastor is preaching she's going to be there plus he, she loves this first lady she loves this, the dignity in which she carries herself amen you know Isaiah Isaiah uh, was married to a prophet it's in Isaiah now they're not saying whether or not she was called as a prophet but they're connecting her to him. He was a prophet. Am I y'all in here with me? And because he was a prophet, they also called her a prophet. Amen. It's the connection. Somebody say the connection. All right. So this is eight years and I've said enough. I want to get to your uh, theme. I'm just trying to make sure. You know, this part, all of the ministers and, and uh, all who are here, just wave, wave your hand. Because uh, I want to acknowledge you, acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge all of the deacons, uh, 
praise God specifically. I praise God for Deacon Powell and Deacon Ward, amen, of the Greater Starlight Church. All of you who are here from Greater Starlight, wave your hand and just say hi there. All right. I appreciate you coming. Uh, some folks say, well, I appreciate, I appreciate your sacrifice. But listen, if we have in church um, over down yonder around the bend and we're all supposed to be there, I expect us to be there. Amen. 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 So, so, Pastor, that's enough. Okay. Did I mention I was married? <laughs> hey, this is on Facebook. Y'all know what was there. Chapter 43 of Isaiah. Pastor Philip, you've done a wonderful job. You've done a wonderful job. Someone once asked me, what is, um, what is successful pastoring? And I could only come up with one word, is being faithful. And you've shown yourself faithful, and I praise God. Now, all the time, you won't get applause for stuff. But when they don't clap, just remember who called you. I've been doing this for 31 years. I think I caught on. Because the person who pats you on the back today will be the one that tries to kill you tomorrow. All right. Let's look at uh, the 18th verse and the 19th verse, and I think I'm going to just stop there. They teach in school to do the whole pericope and all of that stuff, but ain't nobody going to tell on me, so I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to, okay, I'm just going to do this. Let's, here's what it says. Y'all remember 43, starting at 18? Watch this. Remember not the former things. He says, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Watch this. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Ah, hallelujah. This, this is what you said. I'm believing you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm believing you. Everything new for you. One of my favorite writers is the Apostle Peter, and that is because he just tells it like it is. He cuts it straight. He's always, he's always if you will, uh, put up as that disciple who was uh, eager to ask questions and quick to ask without thinking. But I also would like to present to you Peter, the Apostle of Hope. He's called the apostle of hope because he knows what it is to live your life. And it seems that everything is hopeless because of what you've done. And recognize the grace and power of Jesus Christ to restore and to bring you back to where he would have you be. I like this about Peter. I like this about Peter as he writes, if you will, to the scattered in, in Asia. He he literally writes, putting before them the hope that is beyond all their struggles and trials and tribulations to let them know that God is up to something. As a matter of fact, in a very real sense, he ends it by letting them know God's doing a new thing. I wish I had somebody there. Uh, he, he's able to, listen, he's able to literally see beyond the struggles of pastoring and uh, being a parishioner. He he recognizes that God's plan is couched in his grace. Because his plan is couched in his grace. Peter says, you have hope. I wish I had some people in here. It's hard to see now because the shadows are looming over us as we look at a nation that is unsure of who it is as democratically. The shadows are over us as we start to realize the redefinition of gender by people simply trying to redefine God's purpose. It's very, it's very clear 
when we go to the church and hypocrisy is all around us. Uh, but God is in control. And uh, by the way, it is his plan. And the reality is, though, even though it is his plan and it will come forth and come forward, just realize you can't live any kind of way. Can I talk to somebody? You can't live any old kind of way. Isaiah deals with some people who have, listen, literally uh, uh, abandoned their very purpose in life. He deals with some folk that were religious but unrighteous. He deals with idolatry. People who are in, and so what he does is warns them of pending destruction. One place you might find that when you go home is look in Isaiah chapter 5 in the song of the vineyard. God says, ain't nowhere in the world y'all should have failed. Read it, chapter 5. Everything necessary for you to be fruitful and bear good fruit, I've done for you. Listen, I, I place you in a fruitful hill. Y'all still ain't talking about I took the choicest vine and put it in that vineyard. Not only did I put the Charles' vine, and that vine communicates the very life and nature of the church. His name is Jesus. Not only did I, did I he said, but I kept you. I built a hedge around you. I set you apart. Y'all listen to what he's saying. There's no way in the world you shouldn't be living right. That, there's no way in the world you should not be actively involved in obeying and walking with God. Understanding that because of his mercies and his kindness, you ought to present your bodies a living sacrifice. And maybe I'm talking to somebody, I don't know, but there's been times in my life when I've heard the preacher preach, and the preacher brought me to a reality. And that is that I need to change my ways if God's holiness is going to be seen in my life. Y'all still ain't talking to me. <laughs> l l listen to this. Uh, the writer of the book is, is Isaiah. And, and, and it is interesting because Isaiah's name means Yahweh saves. So imagine your preacher, every time he comes through there, folk goes, there goes Yahweh saves. His name reflected his calling. I wish I had somebody. Well, what, what, what I did was, y'all look, what I did was, uh, uh, Pastor Philip, I looked up Philip. And uh, I was going to be deep. I was going to be deep. So I looked at Philip, and here's what it says Lover of horses. <laughs> now, somebody said, Well, Reverend, what does that have? It's not about who he loves, it's about the passion. As a, as a horse trainer, somebody say amen. amen. His passion to see that horse grow into all that it needs to be. So Philip actually speaks of a devotion to a purpose and call. And that's what we have in this preacher. And I know that it's not easy all the time because people don't understand us. That's why I don't get mad at folk that get mad at me because I, I realize they don't see the way I see God has given me eyes that, that, that uh, he gives me to receive the vision, but he gives me a mouth to transfer the vision. Are y'all in here with me? Listen, any attack on me is an attack on God. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. It is because God called me and he knew who I was when he called me. Ah. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah lives up to his name. When you read Isaiah, he lives up to his, his name. Listen, listen, listen. His ministry spanned a time over 64 years. He had seen different regimes come in, he, different forms of government come in, and Isaiah still had to represent the one who saves. Oh, I just want to stop by and tell you, Philip, that's the good thing about this. No matter what occurs in our lives, the transitions that go on, even within our fellowships, let's remain true to who we are. Let's remain true to you. They said, well, Pastor, you, you need to get on with this. I, I promise it's not going to be that long after this. <laughs> look, 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 look. 
watch this. Isaiah was the prophet who warned the people of God. He gave them a series of woes and warnings. One of the things, one of the things he did, he warned uh, 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 the north, if you will, he, uh, uh, because of their debauchery. He warned them that the grace of God, listen, will be seen in the wrath of God. He want, he, listen, he begins, he begins uh, 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 embracing them by telling them that they need to stop embracing uh, false worship. That's Isaiah 29, 1 through 14, so we don't have to read it all. Now, watch this. He, he says you're going to stop relying on other folk, other nations like, like Egypt to protect you from Assyria. All right, he says to the Assyrians, but here's the thing, even though I will allow you to come down upon them, I'm going to deal with you and I'm going to destroy you. He condemned, he, he, he condemned Assyria for the destruction on the nation, though the nation deserved what they got. I wish that Isaiah, Isaiah literally sends out some woes and some warnings. And may I suggest to you that God has some woes and warnings for us? Those of us brothers and sisters who neglect his truth, who refuse to walk in his way, those of us who try to manage the church from our own fleshly minds, he's got a warning because no flesh can glory in his presence. Somebody ought to talk to me today. God's got a warning for us preachers and reminds us that we are now caretakers of his vineyard. And we must be very careful how we, how we nurture the plants and uh, water the plants. This God's got a warning for us. And he, he's reminding us that it may look like we're getting away with doing the wrong thing. But he says judgment is pending. By the way, this is not a message just resigned to the 8th century. It's resigned to right now. And so I came by to stop by to talk to Pastor and Pew. Y'all ain't talking to me. I came to talk to Pastor and Pew and let you know that there are consequences for us living against the divine current. There are consequences against us misrepresenting God. There are consequences to us choosing not to seek him for wisdom and knowledge. There are consequences. In the fifth chapter of, uh, fifth chapter of Isaiah, he tells me, here's one consequence, I'll remove my hedge. Y'all know what that means? That means God has put a hedge of protection around us. But he says, if you choose to walk away, and if you choose to live your life I wish I had counter God. It's counterproductive. But then doesn't that cause us to ask ourselves some questions? What is my conduct in this fellowship? What is my conduct in this pulpit? I can hear somebody right now. It's about time for you to go home. I, 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 I think I'm on my way. I think I'm on my way. Now watch what he does, and this is powerful, Deacon Ward. Here's, here's what he does. He said, yep, I'm going to punish y'all. Y'all going to have some lean years. Because when he talks to them right now, everything looks productive. Everybody, it feels like everybody's in control. He says, but there's going to come a time that you have lean years. In those times, you will starve for my grace. I wish I had, look, you will thirst for my grace. But you'll become like that cow that, that, listen, has nowhere else to graze, nowhere else to drink water, and you will become, watch this, you will literally become deficient. This is God. By the way, that's a testimony of how much we need grace. I wish I had somebody. I, I, I drink water, but it doesn't always quench my thirst. Somebody ought to talk to me. Sometimes I go to bed and I don't even have the grace of a good night's sleep. Y'all still ain't talking. Listen, listen, listen. We can be operating under God's grace and still experience destruction in our lives. 
Mm. So, so uh, how I'm doing, Angela? Okay. Um, so then he talks about recovery. Y'all see it? He says, you're thin now, but I'm going to fatten you up. By the way, this is an act of grace. It's not because they became so good. Because the promise is before they go through the grief. Are y'all in there with me? The grief is for us to learn something. I wish I had somebody here. The, the, the grief is so that we can learn. Without him, we can do nothing. And we cannot be all that we, y'all ain't talking to me, all that we need to be. The grief literally brings us to the sense that judgment is even the grace of God. Boy, that's a hard lesson. <laughs> Isn't it? That's a hard lesson. When we talk about favor, we talk about everything being in agreement with what we want. We don't care about God. But let me tell you something. Sometimes favor don't look like favor. But Pastor, you got to help me. There was a boy by the name of Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers. It was a promise on his life that someday he would rule and yet what he heard was not what he saw. I wish I had somebody. What kills me about Joseph's life is Joseph was going through it, Philip. He was going through it and the Bible kept saying, and the Lord had favor on Joseph. <laughs> Joseph was betrayed by his brothers but the Lord had Y'all in here with me? <laughs> Y'all like, Joseph, listen, went to Potiphar's house and was accused of messing with his wife. I was, and yet, Joseph still had favor. Am I talking to somebody right now? Somebody in this room like me, you're going through some things, you know why you're going through. You know you turned your back on God. You know that there's some, and yet, you still have favor. I wish I had somebody. You still have favor. Somebody ought to say amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. Blind. See, that's the issue, being able to see. Somebody ought to say, being able to see. Listen, we question, we question what we see rather than trusting what God says. And here's what God says. This is how he says, listen, there's coming a day when all of this will be over. Two things I need you to understand. He's talking about, listen, he's talking about the uh, future that is coming, but also the ultimate future. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's a messianic a uh, 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 word, but it also speaks of today. Here's what the Bible teaches us. I'm in, but he's going to bring me out. Okay. I, 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 I don't mean this in Baptist minutes. minutes uh, I'm just about through. And so we find ourselves at this place in our scripture. And here's what he says. Do not continue to focus on what happened to you. Do not continue to focus on Egypt's deliverance. He says, don't, don't, don't continue <laughs> I like that. I like that. Thank you. I'm going to give you a dollar for that. Don't keep crying about it. I wish I could say that this sermon is for y'all. But this sermon is for me. Don't keep talking about years ago we used to do this. God says you can't see the better. I wish I had somebody. You can't see the best 
until you've seen the better. Am I talking to somebody in here? Look, let me tell you something. Right? Some of us really don't think the church is going well. We don't never think the church is going well. Now, whatever, uh, why ever people think that and they, they haven't passed a chicken or a child, I just, I, just, I don't get that. He says, I don't want you to focus on tradition, though. I want you to learn from your tradition. I want you to focus on the one who is able to bring you to where he wants to bring you. Some of us, some of us, the last thing we remember was when we emceed the service 20 years ago. Now that was when we really had a service. God don't want us to get focused on that. He wants us to understand the progression of the Christian life. Things, get, things are good, they get better, and the best is yet to come. Listen to what he says. This thing blows my mind. He says, I, I like to, look, look, some folks still want us to, to reinvent the old church. That's like my son is growing up and he stayed one place and, the, and, and he was stagnant and he couldn't grow. Are y'all in there with me? Because the things that were done were not things to benefit his growth. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not 1970. This is not 1950. There's a whole new group of folk that needs to see, here we go, a new thing. And I know you're comfortable with it. And there's nothing wrong with thanking God for what happened years ago. But God has a progressive plan. I wish I had somebody. Hey, Y'all didn't stop listening to me now. But listen, God has a progressive plan. Not for your church, but for his church. And may I, may I say this real quick? Some of it you will not understand. It will not get it. Are y'all in here with me? But, but I'm here with y'all. Because I want to celebrate.
put in the oil. So that if you were blind and you're walking down the street, here comes a preach. Here comes the preacher. Uniquely characterized by God's word. There's another one. Several. I'm just going to just do this. There's one. We read it all the time. If you're afflicted and sick, send for the elders of the church. You said, let him anoint you with oil. And so we have oil to represent that. But in reality, when he mentions that, he's really talking about ministry and medicine. I hear people say, oh, God's going to take care of you. God's going to heal me. Yeah, he will. But God has some agents. Some of them are called doctors. Can, can I say this, Dickie Powell? And all of them ain't saved. Ooh, I didn't shut, people didn't shut down on me that quick. I, I could watch, but listen, this is what he said. He says, anointing them with oil. In James, when he says anointing them with oil, he's literally saying what? Put some medicine on them. But it ain't the medicine that's going to heal them. God can use the medicine for the healing. But you need to pray for them. That's our problem in church. That's our problem. Our church is afflicted. Our churches are afflicted. And we want to do everything else but put some oil on it. How about, how about this one? How about this one? How, how about this, y'all? Look, those that, that just have to leave. No, look. This, that anointing in Jericho uh, really spoke of the medicinal oil. They put oil in his wounds, anointing him. See, anointing has more than one reason. I mean, one, one definition. How about this? When he talks about anointing, he literally also talks about God anointing us by putting the truth in our hearts. But what is he talking about here in our text? Watch how powerful this thing is. Okay, well you, when, you, when you look at it, here's what he's talking about in our, in our text. Uh, I'm, I'm an old farm boy. I grew up on a farm. Hey Amen. I know some of y'all don't want to admit y'all did too. But I grew up on a farm. And we used to, watch this. We used to um, put yokes on our cows keep them from what breaking out and all that right and we put it fit it to the cow's neck right that was a yoke that, that yoke was to burn them down to a point that they couldn't move the way they wanted to move mm. <laughs> God said y'all messed up and because you messed up you, you ended up living a life to where you became skinny. And the yoke that once fit around your neck now is swinging back and forth. He said, but there's going to come a day when by grace I will deliver you. I will bring you to where I want to bring. There's coming a day. He says, and then you're going to get fat. And then he says, and the anointing breaks the yoke. Pastor, I don't get it. Look, if I'm skinny and I start to grow, eventually what's going to happen? My neck is going to grow. And my neck is going to grow. And when my neck grows, watch this, it's going to break the yoke. God says, I know what you did. But I'm going to fill you so full of grace. That is going to fatten you. And when you get fat, it's going to break the yoke. You, you can't experience this new thing if you're burdened down by the yoke of yesterday. You've got to get fat enough in mind and fat enough in heart. 
Okay, I'm going to close. He, he says, the anointing breaks the yoke. And then in the 18th verse, there we are. We're finishing. Uh, in the 18th verse, he says, remember and consider things of old. He says, behold, watch this. I am doing a new thing. Y'all, this ought to blow your mind. I can't see it, but he said it. He says, right here in New Mount Pleasant, right here in Greater Starlight, I'm doing a new thing. And perhaps you can't see it because you're too busy looking back. Not forgetting the things that are behind you. Recognize it had purpose. He says, I'm getting ready to do a brand new thing. I wish I had somebody. By the way, watch the text. The text doesn't say you're getting ready to do a new thing. That's what I have. I have a problem with new Christianity. Listen, you can do nothing without him. Has I got somebody in here? He says, I'm going to do it. Didn't you mess up? Yes, I did. But he says, I'm going to do a new thing. And listen, listen, some of y'all in here need to hear this real clear. You need to be ready to bust out of that yoke. Everybody won't do it. I'm doing a new thing. Look, somebody say, well, I can't see it. Don't look around. Just look up. I better go. He says, I'm doing a new thing. Y'all better listen to what I'm trying to say. You don't have the pastor you had before. You got a new pastor with new vision. And the reality is you better recognize when God does something, he does it well. I'm out of here. I I'm out of here. I'm out. He's doing a new thing. You're trying to hold on to the old stuff. And you should respect the old God. You should respect everything that was done. But the reality is God's up to doing some new stuff. The Bible doesn't say, I will. He says, I'm doing it now. I wish I had. And because change is so difficult for us, it's hard to see when that happens. He's doing a new thing. Well, I know he does it because one day out on yonder's hill, when the law was once mastering his people, God sent his son. And the way to get to heaven is a new way. Y'all know who had the problem with his new way? Church folk. Yeah, read it. <laughs> they were the ones that had as a matter of fact, they'd already figured their way. Y'all better listen. You know who has a problem with it? Uh, church folk. When God starts to do something new, you ought to be able to say to God, God, do what you do. Okay, I'm gone. One day out in, on Calvary's Hill, I wish I had some God showed up with a new plan. It was a plan he was doing from the Old Testament even to the New Testament. I wish I had some God sent his son. No more would the blood of bulls and goats satisfy a holy God. He sent his son. Y'all know him, don't you? We call him Jesus. I wish I had somebody. Y'all know who he is. He's, he's the lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. Y'all know him, don't you? He's the only begotten of the Father. Y'all know him. Y'all know him. He's God in human flesh. He is <laughs> the Lamb of God that takes away <laughs> I better quit. The sins of the world. God did a new thing. And he's still doing a new thing now. And all we've got to do is embrace him and what he's doing. Can I tell you? And then we will 
enjoy life to the full. I stopped by to tell you on my way to heaven, God is doing a new thing. Somebody ought to say new thing. Look, even if you don't like me, it's in the word you ought to say new thing. God is doing a new thing. And all I've got to do is cooperate with what God is doing. You saw his son. Uh, he cooperated with what the father was doing. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. But the Bible says early Sunday morning, he did a new thing. Uh, he rose from the dead uh, so that you might live also. Can I tell you, not only did he rise, but he did a new thing. He sent back the Holy Ghost who occupies my heart, who leads and guides me in all truth. Uh, he does a new thing. Uh, and because he's done that new thing, uh, I live my life uh, trying to live for him, uh, trying to love him properly. Somebody ought to say yes. Uh, that new thing works in our lives and we become trusting to God uh, and we begin to walk with God uh, and no matter what anybody says, we sing the words of that old song. Uh, Lord, I need you uh, to make me over. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I need you, Lord, uh, because I am the clay. Uh, and you are the potter. Uh, mold me and make me uh, after your will. Uh, he's doing a new thing. Somebody ought to say yes. Uh, somebody in the room uh, knows that he's done a new thing in your life. Uh, you once was lost, uh, but now you're found. Uh, blind, but now you see. Uh, he's doing a brand new thing. Uh, and all you got to do uh, is just simply say, have your way. Have your way in New Mount Pleasant. Uh, have your way uh, in Pastor Philip. Uh, have your way uh, in the choir stand. And have your way on the usher board. And have your way on the deacon board. Uh, Somebody ought to say yes. Is there anybody here that wants him to have a way in your life? You ought to shout glory. You ought to shout hallelujah. Oh, oh, have your way. Y'all excuse me here, but I feel a little dancing in my feet and a little clapping in my hand. When I think about what he's doing in my life, uh, say yes, uh, say yes, uh, he's making ways uh, out of no way, uh, he's picking up bow down heads, he's doing it, I tell you, uh, he's building you up on every leaning side, uh, somebody ought to say yes, uh, well how is that possible? you leave the last verse up. He talks about a desert. And that's where we're living. We're living in a desert place. But the good news is that we have an ever supply of righteous water that's flowing in our lives. And it's refreshing us. And it's restoring us. As he does a new thing in our lives. Water! that satisfies a weary soul. Water that refreshes a downtrodden heart. Water, it's a brand new thing. And I stop by to tell you that I'm so glad that grace meets my grief. Somebody say yes. Is there any money in here that knows him for yourself? You ought to shout and tell somebody God's doing a brand new thing.
thing. It's new in nature and it's new in kind. God's doing a brand new thing. And if you don't mind, neighbor, I know you're just rocking. If you don't mind, neighbor, I know you're just sitting here. If you don't mind, neighbor, I want you to do, I want you to do what Shirley said, that the old man said. You ought to look at him right where you are. You ought to say, I don't know if you get this, but if you don't get it, I want you to do one thing for me. I need you to hold my mule. Somebody say, yes, I hold my mule so that I can give God the praise. Hold my mule that I might dance in his presence. Hold, hold my mule. I just want to praise him. I just want to lift him up because he's worthy. Yeah. He's doing a new thing. He's doing it just for you. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. If you believe it, say yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's doing. Say it again. God's doing. God's doing. I know it's our pastor's off day today, but what one of his favorite sayings is, didn't our hearts burn? Let's give it up once again for Reverend Prentice Lewis. I tried to tell you, for those that knew, now you know. For those that didn't know, now you know. We want to thank him once again for those powerful words of encouragement. The word of God, our spoken word. Next up, an important, important part of our order of service. We're going to ask for our invitation to Christ by our very, by our very own Minister Kathy Thomas. you got to get your house in order. 
then you got to think about some of the things that the pastor has spoken today. God is doing a new thing. And if you don't get it right, it might be too late. But today, he's giving you a chance to get your life in order. This wasn't something that just became open to you. This is something that God already had planned for you. He gave you, he's giving you a chance to get it right. Because beyond this worldly life, there's a new thing. There's a new thing. The doors of the church is open. I want everybody just to stand in your seat. Stand at your seat. I want you not to look at the person next to you or not the person around you. I just want you to get in your mindset to know that the Lord is here. He's right here in this house. He's right there in Facebook in your house and wherever you might be. Something might happen in your life that you didn't know how to get back with the relationship with God. Things in this world might have been going on and you have lost a lot of things. But one thing, you have never lost Christ. He has been there for you always. Even when you wasn't there for yourself, he was still there. If you feel like you have lost the favor of God. Now this is a personal thing. Because this is between you and God. It's time to get our souls right. It's time to get our minds right. It's time to stop playing church. God is calling you. He's calling his people to come in and get it right. He's calling you to do the work to get someone else saved. As I'm in the study with the children on Wednesday, we talk about a personal relationship with Christ. Because if you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, then you don't know. He gives you the Bible to direct you, to show you how to get your life in order. And in the Bible, there's words that you're supposed to follow. You're not supposed to change these words to your own satisfaction. You have to follow it directly. So right now, I'm not ascending myself to you but I'm sending the Lord to you. He's calling you. You have the opportunity to come to the front of the church and give your life to Christ. If you haven't been baptized, you have the opportunity. If you already had a relationship with Christ, but you lost all hope and all sight to it, He's giving you that relationship. He's giving you that time to get it right. On Facebook, God is calling you. Right where you are in your house, in your car, he's telling you to get your life in order. He's telling you to get it right. There's a new thing. There's a new generation. God is not calling them to be seen, but he's calling them to be heard because he needs someone to step up for him. So you have time to go to the comment on Facebook and make your comment and say that you would like to be a part of New Mount Pleasant or you would like to get your life in order. We will pray for you and we will give you other churches, but this is the time God is calling you. I have open.
open up to you the Lord and it's up to you because this is a personal relationship it's your soul and it's not promised you can go right out that door and it could all be over and you don't have another chance things happen quickly in your life you become sick real quickly life turns upside down really quickly but if you have God he will keep you covered you guys can have a seat because right now I want to tell the people out there that's really going through that God has you and you have time to come in you might stumble by this message and don't know that God is still alive. You might be homeless. You might be sick in the mind. Things might be going on in your life where you don't know how to get it right. God is still the same. He has never changed. There's things in this life that you have never saw before that's going on. So we have opened up the doors and we have left it up to you and you know if God is calling you. So we thank you and we're going to let God work on your soul. So thank you. Amen, amen, amen. None have accepted yet. We know that there's still room. I want to thank you once again, Greater Starlight Missionary Baptist Church, for coming out and fellowship and celebrating with us, representing for yourselves and your pastors. That's very, very big and commendable. I also want to acknowledge this bad quartet that we got a chance to hear. Let's give it up for Daryl Mitchell on guitar. I just saw him on drums, so obviously he's a multi-instrumentalist. That's Brother Nate on the organ, Brother Al Threets on bass, and let's give the drummer some, Antoine Pierce. Thank you, gentlemen, once again, we enjoyed you. Church offering, New Mount Pleasant, NBC, Decons and Ushers. The church offering will be followed by an offertory prayer from Minister Kathy Thomas. I think they left out on, on us. Be in the hands of our usher. Hello, church. At this time, it's uh, ties and offering. So we'll po uh, please both sides stand and obey each usher. Thank you. of you, for those of you from Greater Starlight, 
pass by your deacon and put your offering for greater starlight in his place. And then you can pass by our table as well. Amen. That way your church doesn't, this is a joint service. We don't want your church to miss your offering. Amen. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for the offering that was received. We thank you for the tithes, Lord. We just thank you and praise you, Lord. We thank you for the ones that were able to give, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch the ones that wasn't able to give, Lord. Bless them, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. As we come to a close in our order of service, we come to our special yeah 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 we come to our special presentations introduction by our auxiliaries families and friends um, for sister Catherine Gibbs and that will be our boys to me in moment the end of the road for me and my guy right here oh I want I want I want to thank my motivational speech right here when we were going over the um, the order of service be before church, he was like, are you nervous? I was like, nah, I ain't gonna be nervous. He was like, good, you shouldn't be. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a piece of cake and easy. So, we, <laughs> we thank you and Jeremiah wanna say something. Um, God bless you all and I hope you have a wonderful day today and God pray for you all. Amen. Sister Gibbs. I thank and praise God for being here today and just having the opportunity to bask in the glow of Reverend Prentice Lewis. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you. And now what we'd like to do to each and every one of you in the auxiliaries, to the friends and families, that have gifts, you know, words of encouragement, and anything else that you might have, then would you please make a line over to this side, please? All the auxiliaries, please make a line over to this side. Okay, ushers, mothers, whomever, all the auxiliaries, all of the friends and family, we ask that you make a line to this side. And the same way that they do at times of bereavement, we're going to give you just a little bit of time so you can say what you need to say, and we're going to move it home. All right? All right. Okay, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you all who are up right now, and to those of you who are still making your way this way. 
We're going to start, first of all, with none other than the great, the fantastic Pastor Zaid Committee, you know, who is there for the loving and the taking care of the man of God, Sister Debbie Curry. Good afternoon. We're Pastor's Aid Committee. Please stand. On behalf of the Pastor's Aid Committee, Pastor Philip A. Lewis and First Lady Miranda Lewis, we just want to say thank you for your eight years of total dedication, your hard work, and please don't fall again. All right, then. Well, anyway, we just want to say thank you for all your work and service that you do, not just for us, but for the community. As we've seen you work in this church, out this church. Your phone, you never turn it off. You know, you, you publicize it. Your, your love and your compassion and your God, what I see, the spirit that you portray has lifted not only the pastor's aid, as we stand, but as human beings, you inspire us. We just want to say thank you. First, giving out to God to Pastor Lewis, First Lady Miss Miranda Lewis, to Reverend Pastor Princess Lewis, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Will the Missionary Society please stand? Missionary Society members. Oh, man. On behalf of the Missionary Society, Pastor Lewis, First Lady Miranda Lewis, we want to thank you so much for being here with us for eight years dedicating yourself to us, giving us the word of God every Sunday morning. We're so grateful. And we just want to give you this little token appreciation from the Missionary Society. Amen. God bless you. And this is for Miss Kenny. Good afternoon, church. Would all the members of the Mother's Board please stand? <laughs> On behalf of the Mother's Board, we want to wish you a uh, happy eighth anniversary, Pastor Lewis and First Lady Miranda. We love you. Would the deaconess please stand? Um, good afternoon, Pastor Lewis, uh, Sister Lewis. I am so honored today. Um, happy eighth anniversary. We thank you for your service. You know, I thank you for you personally. And the reason why I do is because you saw something. God allowed you to see something in me that I did not see in myself. When you appointed me president of the Deaconess, I started off uh, being an usher, I'm not gonna be long, came in here when I was 23 years old, I'm not gonna say how old I am now, but I thank God for you and your wife. 
and we love you dearly. On behalf of the Deacon Board, we'd like to thank you for being our shepherd, for allowing us to follow you, and you, you leading us in the right direction. I want to let you know personally that I appreciate you, my family appreciates you, and from the Deacon Board, we want to uh, present you with a gift certificate to Ruth Chris Steakhouse. This is for Pastor Lewis and the First Lady, and I'm speaking on behalf of all of the youth. Um, we just want to thank you for everything that you have done for us, and just thank you for having us stay on the right path. Last but certainly not least, we're coming to you for the people who sing the word. Amen. Those we are jubal. We sing the word. Yes, you do. And we hope that we do it gratuitously and wonderfully enough for someone to know that the words that we sing are the words of Christ, yes. the invitation of Christ, you're the forbearance of Christ, the mercy and his grace. We thank and we praise him for just being able to do that. You know, whether we're in our robes or whether we're in our clothes, you know, we know that one day, if by chance, my prayer is to not feel the sting of death, but to be standing next to someone and these same old clothes just drop off and I go on up where I'm supposed to go. So we thank and praise God for each and every one of you who have been very, very auspiciously kind to our particular pastor and his wife, his help me. We thank you. We praise you. And you know what? I'm so glad I'm kin to y'all. You know, because y'all some good looking people. <laughs> blood of my blood, flesh of my flesh. We thank you. And we praise God for you. This is for each and every one of, for each one of you. There's something in there for both of you. I don't want to stand. How y'all doing today? <laughs> this is a very humbling thing, but I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. As a matter of fact, I went to bed last night with my mind stayed on Jesus because he is so encouraging. You know, this is a, this race that we run, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And sometimes you feel like you're running up a mountain of broken glass barefoot. But God is so encouraging. He's so loving. And I'm honored today that you all think enough of us to come out and spend this time. And I want to thank you, Reverend, for giving us the word, an anointed word as always. It's a word straight from God. It cuts. It heals. You give us hope, 
Our God is a God of hope. And so I just want to thank our Pastors Aid Committee for putting this program together. I want to thank our Newmont family, our choirs, and our Starlight family, our Greater Starlight family, and everyone that came out to support, encourage, participate. I love you. I love you. I love you. Do y'all smell something in the back? Does it smell like roast? Does it smell like peach cobbler? I just want you all to know that there's some good stuff back there. And if you haven't had any of Chef Boy A.B.'s peach cobbler, you in for a treat if you love peach cobbler. And I just want to say to my um, uh, Donnie and Lonnie, this is from your brother Ronnie. And I felt like I needed to have it today. I love you all. I'm so glad you all are here, each and every one of you. God bless you. Amen. Cutie. You got it? You just hold it until we, yeah. Come on. Amen. To my friend, my brother, Brother Prentice Lewis. Amen. Now, we, we don't know if we're cousins or not. I, I think we're from the same plantation. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. To, amen, Greater Starlight Missionary Baptist Church, thank you. To New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, thank you, thank you, thank you. Eight years to my pastors, y'all stand up again, y'all stand up. Thank you, thank you. To Debbie Curry, my pastor's aide president, Y'all worked deep, y'all worked into the night last night. Thank you. I hope y'all went home, straight home and went to bed. <laughs> Amen, because we're not spring chickens anymore. Amen. <laughs> None of us. Amen. I, Amen. I thank you all so much. To all of you, thank you. This has been a wonderful day. We go... Now we're going to eat. You can take off your mask when you get outside, and we're going to go back there and eat. I thank you, uh, my techs, all of you, my musicians, Brother Willie. Man, thank you. <laughs> Willie, when I first came here, I was talking to Willie. He stopped playing at another church because I was coming here. Amen. And I... You and your wife, I thank you both. Thank you. Y'all are, are dependable. Sister Pepsi always has a good idea. Amen. I have to say that. Thank you, all of you. Deacons, thank you. Thank you. And some good brothers. And we go, we're going into next year, I have to let me say this. Going into next year, our theme will be a church standing under the word of God. Because if we do that, everything else, every, somebody say everything, everything, will fall into place. A church standing under the word of God. God bless you. I'm not going to belabor uh, this point, we can talk when we get in there and eat. Amen. Amen. To my, do I, how many of my cousins I got here? I, I see you. I want to tell you, we're going to be having Thanksgiving at the house this year. Amen. Everybody my cousin now, huh? I see. Let us all stand. Thank you so much. You've done so much for us.
and we love you. Your pastor, and we love you. Amen. So I, let me give a shout out to my son. Son, thank you because you are a good son. You're a good son. You, you, you went through some things, but I see God really working in your life. And just continue to allow him to. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. Let us. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Hey, I got a good wife. Amen. I thank God for her. Amen. She keeps me straight. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the food and we'll dismiss. Father, we thank you. We thank you that for all that's been said and done here today. And Lord, now we ask you to bless this food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. Let the fellowship be a nourishment to our spirit. And now may the grace of God and the sweet, precious communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us now, henceforth, and forevermore, let all God's people say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. I got something for you, too.